Blessed be the Lord, my rock and my strength Who teaches my hands to work Hello, good morning. Welcome to today's program, Jitaya's World. <laughs> Second Tuesday in the month of September. May we all see the end of the year in peace and joy. I am Dili Ogotola, your anchor man. The program is sponsored by Jitaya Music Production, North Carolina, USA. So sit back as we enjoy the program. Are my fingers to fight? In the land of the living, God is a faithful God. Now to the first segment of the program. This is my story. Hmm. My name is Joseph Scriven. I was born near Dublin, Ireland, in 1820. My father was a captain in the Royal Marines, and my mother's brother was an English speaker. My early life was pleasant. My parents were wealthy, well-educated, and devoted to each other. After entering Trinity College, Dublin, I decided to follow a military career like my father, and I withdrew from the school to become a cadet at a military college. It soon became apparent that my health was not good enough to endure the rigors of military training. So, I resigned from the military college and returned to Trinity College from where I got my BA degree in 1842. I was engaged to be married. The day before the wedding, friends of my fiancé, they planned a party for the bride-to-be at the seaside. During the phone, everyone went for a swim in the ocean. My fiancé, she accidentally drowned and I was profoundly shocked. My relationship with my parents was also strained at this time for leaving their family church to go to another church. So, I decided to emigrate to Canada. When I arrived in Canada, I was 25 years old. I taught in two different towns for a while and then I became a private tutor for the children of Lieutenant Pengeli, a retired Navy officer. There, I met Roche, Roche Eliza, a relation of the Pengeli family and we were soon engaged to be married. My life seemed to be becoming bright once more. Then, four weeks before our marriage, Eliza suddenly became ill, and she died. <sighs> I was crushed, totally crushed. My lifestyle changed completely. I went to live by myself in a small house. I tried to help the poor and underprivileged by sharing my food and clothing with them. I also did carpentry and household repairs for those who were poor to pay. But I refused to work for those who wanted to hire me, for I did not want to take work away from trained carpenters in the town. I had been in Canada about 10 years. My mother wrote to tell me that she was healed. She wanted me to return home. I was unable to do so, so I wrote a poem and sent it to her to encourage her. A short time later, I became healed, and a neighbor came to sit beside my bed. He saw the poem that I wrote, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. I confessed that I had written it to comfort my mother in a time of sorrow and I had not meant to show it to any other person. After some time, my health began to deteriorate. A few months later, my body was discovered in a small stream near the lake in an area where I had once lived. No one ever knew what had caused my death. Only me. Because I had spent so many years in helping the poor and because of the popularity of my hymn. In 1919, the townspeople erected a monument at the lake in my honor. What a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Hmm. My good friends, this is my story. Ah, 
Joseph Medlicott Scriven, born 10th September 1819 and died 10th August 1886. Friend, don't stop that thing you are doing. Continue. Add more efforts. Testimonies of joy awaits you very soon. It might look hard today, but surely there is a bright star ahead. This is my story. The next segment of the program, Jitayos Music. The music for today is Rest in Place. <laughs> I find the rest in place I find the truth and life By your word I am satisfied I am the life of God I am your chosen word By your grace I am satisfied Everybody come over and see I have a good God In place. I found the rest of play. I find the truth and lies. Go 
most is my drive. I am the Dara. I am the Dara. Moro to do. Moro to do. Put it on the Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. I hope you enjoy that music. You can download it and other Oluwakande songs on iTunes and other digital platforms. Follow Oluwakande on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at Oluwakande. Let me inform you that Digital Music USA will be having a program in October this year. October 16th to be precise. Album launch and worship night. Titled Rest in Place. So, you are cordially invited. Venue is 3062 Doc Beneth, Fayetteville, North Carolina, 28306, by 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern Time. And also by December, we'll be live in Ogbomacho City, Nigeria. For more details, you can contact our Director of Operation on plus one two three one six two zero four two zero eight or plus two three four eight one two six four seven. 2994. And if you have any information for the CEO, Jitayo Music, the director of operation will revert. Now let us listen to the word for the week from the CEO, Jitayo Music Production, North Carolina, USA. Good day, my brother and sister. My name is Olu Akande. Welcome to today's episode. Today we're going to be talking about hurry up and wait. Hurry up and wait. In my career, we say hurry up and wait it means some things in life require to act quickly why some need patiently waiting diligently i'll say that again it means some things in life require us to act quickly why some need patiently waiting diligently god is always online and never for one time be offline he knows what is going on in your life his network has and will never fail the lord is good to those who wait for him to the soul who seek him it is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the lord psalm 40 verse 1 says i waited patiently for the lord he inclined to me and heard my cry god could give us anything we desire the minute we ask and he wants to give them to us but sometimes he wants us to wait while we have our eyes focused on the destination we forget the importance of the journey this is where god wants to teach and mold us so that we are prepared when we reach our destination in isaiah chapter 40 verse 31 god will renew our strength as we wait on him waiting on god help us to focus on the purpose and direction for our life according to God's will. It is important to take time to be still before God. So what are the things we need to be doing while we're waiting on God? We need to be trusting Him. We need to pursue His righteousness in faith while we're waiting patiently on God. We need to create time to serve others while patiently waiting on God. We need to look out for those who need help in covering their weaknesses with your strength because right now the lord has placed some strength in you no matter what the condition is so that he has embedded in you keep using it keep using the gifts of god that he has given to you encourage someone encourage someone do all the good you can by all the means you can in all the way you can in all the places you can at all the time you can as long as ever you can be watchful and be an expectant while patiently waiting on God. And I believe and pray our expectations shall not be cut short in Jesus' name. This week, you shall experience a testimony overload in the mighty name of Jesus. You will open your mouth and say, Ah, this is what God has done in my life. Have a wonderful week. Oh, our time is up for today. From Digital Music House, we love you. We love you. So see you next week for another episode of the program. I am Dele Ogotola, your anchor man. Stay blessed. I am the good guy. Everybody come over and see it.